Hi, I'm Marla Niederer from Orsini's Angels, and I hope that your new year is filled with wonderful and amazing things this year. I wanted to share with you a little bit of some of the projects I've been doing and um, some of the tutorials that I'll be showing you in the near future on my YouTube channel. But a lot of times the new year is a start for people. It's, it's kind of a way to refresh, um, focus on some of the things that you'd like to do in the coming year, and focus on developing practices that help you as an artist or whatever your interests are. And I thought what might be a nice way to start the new year is to start out with a new journal. I love journals and this one I made as a sketchbook journal and it was inspired by Heather um, from her YouTube channel Ruby and Pearl XO where she made these pretty little house tags and I decided to use some of my own artwork and make it into a two signature sketchbook. And what I did is I, um, and I'm going to show you this in a tutorial, but um, basically I used a lot of my own artwork and um, I used some vintage e ephemera and um, I used a cloth spine. And in the tutorial, what I'll be doing is showing you how I put this together with cardstock for the um, front and the back of the book. And I use some vintage sketchbook paper. And I'll show you step by step how I made two different signatures for the book and how I sewed them into the book. So I hope you'll enjoy that and that'll be coming shortly on my Orsini's Angels YouTube channel. The other thing I wanted to share with you is a lot of people have known me for my needle sculpting cloth figurative art. So this is not completed but I started experimenting with clay and as a nod to you know and I will be finishing this but I just haven't yet um, but as a nod to the cloth that I've used in the past I incorporated that into my clay sculpture and um, I used some of my wire work and my bead work and I think all of the different skills that you acquire as an artist can always come together when you're working on something new and I also have been um, taking some classes. I've taught online classes for a really long time, but I also have taken some online classes and I've started to do that more frequently since uh, the pandemic. And I found that it's quite enjoyable, not just to teach, but also to take classes and learn new things. And I'm always been inspired by other artists. Now this, unfortunately, a lot of times when I take a class, I'm not the best student. I tend to go off and do my own thing. But I use the class to develop new techniques, to learn different techniques, how other artists do different things, and then go off and do my own thing. Um, and this was inspired by a class that I took on A for Artistic and the artist was Colleen Coughlin and she taught the class, um, I think it was called Little Hanger Doll and it was so much fun and instead of doing exactly like she did, I kind of went off and did my own thing and made my own little hanging doll. And again, I used um, a little nod to fabric and with the clay. And I actually used um, 
I don't know how well you can see this, but I actually used some fabric for the hair and I basically um, used a lot of clay and embedded the fabric with clay. And I also used fabric for the costuming, but I stiffened it with clay. And that was kind of a learning process. And then I set it aside. Um, I also took a clay class from um, Jean Marie Webb on the Ivy Newport channel. And this I originally did and painted much more intensely. And I was kind of not real happy because it's not my style um, to paint things very intensely. So I kind of tend to do more light and airy. And um, so I was in the process of repainting it, but um, it really was quite a fun class. And um, I've taken several classes on Ivy Newport's website, and that's where the class Nature and Clay can be found that um, Jean-Marie Webb taught. Now, right now what I'm doing is I'm taking a class on um, Karen Bullock's website, and it's called The Whimsy Queens, and it's um, presented by Katrina Siskowski. I hope I'm saying that right. I might not be pronouncing it right, but it's called The Whimsy Queens. And I don't know how well you can see this, but what she did is um, she actually, she had two projects in the class. And I'm currently working on this. And I jumped to the second project and kind of skipped the first. The first was kind of a seated figure. And the second one was one that she mounted within a frame. And she used mixed media um, for the frame and, and glued the figure onto it. But I again, I used the class as a um, bouncing off springboard and kind of went and did my own thing. I basically took it because her figures are quite endearing. And as I take most classes, it's because there's something that the artist does that really attracts me to their art. But then I kind of want to do my own um, style when I create. And I've done a lot of other things in my past, so I kind of use those two and look at the um, techniques the artist presents in the class, but then kind of fine tune it to fit how I work. And that's okay. Um, and instead, like, um, in this class, she didn't use an armature and kind of glued pieces together right onto the background. And I found that I kind of wanted to go with an armature because I felt I personally would be really frustrated trying to put life into a figure without an armature. So I did that. And I was concerned that I kind of wanted it to be um, very stable and attached to the piece. So I added wire to the back. So instead of just gluing it on, I will also be attaching it with these wires to the background of the mixed media piece. And I really enjoyed it. And I got a couple of things from these classes that were really simple. Now this is not complete. And I will, in my next vlog, I'll show you um, what I did to complete this. But um, a couple of things that I got out of this was, and obviously my figure doesn't look like hers because I made it more my style. But um, some of the things that I got out of this and the other koi classes that I took was one, um, in the Katrina's class, she used 
uh, creative paper clay. But I had been introduced to Ladal, which is a natural stone clay, um, by Colleen in her class, the little hanger doll. And I really, I've always used creative paper clay in the past and liked it, but after using Ladal, I really found that it's much smoother and easier to use and easier to sand. And I hate sanding, but um, it's part of working with clay if you want a finished piece. And um, the other thing that both Katrina and um, Colleen use are shaper tools. And I had never used them before for my clay. And this one is, um, I think I, I got this on Amazon or Michaels. I think, actually, I think I got it in Michaels. And it's an extra firm clay shaper and it has the taper point and it's in the size zero since I was working with something really tiny. So I bought one just to try it out and it really makes an exceptional difference in my um, work for something so tiny. Because a lot of times when I do clay work, I use my fingers and the ball of my fingers to do um, you know, the smoothing and stuff before it dries while I'm sculpting. And with the clay shaper, it can actually go into areas that I could not. And I've used other tools, but I just found that, you know, with the silicone tip, you know, it's much easier to work with without creating gouges and things like that in the piece while you're working on it. And the other thing that I tried was just using a kitchen sponge for sanding. And I cut it up into little pieces that would work with a small um, sculpture and really found it to do a wonderful job because prior to that I used um, a lot of different uh, sandpaper and actually automotive sandpaper and I was noticing that a lot of times I would inadvertently um, put a little gouge in a piece which you know when you don't like to sand too much you really don't want to go back and have to work on that. Um, so, um, but I found this works really nicely. The other thing that I do is I also have some clay um, wooden sculpting tools. I don't have them handy right now to show you, but they're sculpting tools you can get any, any place. And, um, but I prefer the wood over the um, plastic just because with the plastic, it often has uh, a little hard edge and w for the wood, it's smooth all the round and I find that works very well. And what I did with um, the clay is after I used the, the sponge to sand it and let it dry, um, I took the wooden um, tool and just barn, barn burnished it basically kind of like you know if this was the wooden tool just pressing hard with um, a soft edge of the wooden tool and just to kind of smooth it out and I, I didn't know if it would work with this type of clay but I've done that all along with the creative paper clay and find that it may take a little while but I really like the finish when I'm completed with that so that's kind of what I've been doing um, with my clay work and I'm going to continue to do that and share with you as I progress with that and I'll also be continuing to share with you um, free tutorials so that you can kind of create along with me and um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you um, have and you'd like to see some more of my videos, just subscribe. Um, other than that, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. I wish you a wonderful, creative new year. And I will see you soon. Bye now.